Welcome back, my old carrot crunchers. So, we are back in the workshop. We've got another electrical fault. We're going to start running through it. We've got a 2011 BMW uh, E92. Uh, customer complaint is that it's got no radio, no iDrive, no screen, no parking sensor noises, no stereo noises, literally nothing. It's not the whole lot out. So there is a bit of a backstory to this one. Um, she has taken it to a local specialist. They've gone with the obvious. So if you get hold of a, a head unit, we have to plug it in. I think that's what happened. Um, but the customer's got her own head unit. They've plugged it in. That didn't fix it. Then they've said it needs investigation. I don't know whether they've recommended me, whether it was time scale or what, you know, because they're, they're very competent to do this type of work. But somehow we've ended up getting the job. So we got to take over and we're going to start from there. So let's get into it. So the customer did say that when the garage looked at it, they plugged it in, it's got no communication. Now, there's two things that can happen with that. The scan tool won't talk to the head unit or the head unit isn't talking to another unit to turn itself on. So you can't go by, we've got no communication to it. So we have given it a plug in and sure enough, yeah, no communication between the scan tool and the head unit. So we know that's not turning on. Sometimes with the most system, with the uh, fiber optic loop, they won't turn on but it's the first one we're going to go to. I think you should be able to talk to that, but I don't know. I don't think it's the most complicated system in the world. So we're going to get some diagrams up, have a quick look. Um, the iDrive, let's check the power to that, make sure we've got any communication lines to it. Then we're going to pull the stereo out, have a look at that. And obviously we've got to check all the diagrams, see what we've got going on. So let's do that. Let's get some diagrams up. Let's show you how it works on all data. And then, yeah, get some testing done. So the only bugbear we have with all data, um, I don't know why, but on the BMW site in the minis, you don't have a search function. So you have to go through, these are literally a 400 and odd wiring diagrams, uh, 413 wiring diagrams, and they don't sort of link together either. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's a bit of a pain, but it is main dealer stuff. So we have found the radio supply, but that is all that will show you is the supply of the radio. And as you can see here, what we have is, so we have main live coming down, 15 amp. That's gonna go down to the head unit. We got CAN bus, we've got, got a couple of CAN communications. We've got the most system going out and an earth. So that's something we can check on there. Um, I'm going to quickly, I think you've got to take the bottom out to the bottom center console part out anyway to get the head unit out. So we're going to check whether we've lost live to the iDrive. I can't find the iDrive um, on here on the wiring diagrams, but what I could do, I could stop working on this car now and email off to him and just say, I want all the information for the iDrive, for the radio, for this and that and that, and I'll send it through to me on a big file and I'll have everything on there. Um, so it is good for that. You have got some sort of backup with a lot of uh, systems you don't, if it's not on there, that's it. So yeah, we're gonna go direct to the unit, check the voltages in, pull the, pull the hard drive out, pull the unit out, see what we're missing, see what's going on. If we've got all of our voltages and everything there, then we could be going down a fiber optic loop, but I think that that should still power up or you should be able to like insert a disc or something, even if it doesn't power up and actually work. We've got the hard drive out. We've got a four plug, four wire plug on there. And I assume I'm a big advocate of, don't be testing something if you don't know what's meant to be there. But when you get used to this sort of stuff, you've got four wires, two of them are twisted. So we're gonna suspect they're cam wires. We're not sure, but I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, and we're gonna have a live and unearth. So we're just gonna flip the ignition on. Mm -mm. There we go. So I would think the reddish colored wire is going to be voltage, which it is 12.2 volts. Next one's a brown wire. That is earth. Okay. If we go across, well, in fact, let's just test the can wires, which we suspect to be can. 1.9 volts and about five volts-ish. But if we just go along onto our next one, that's a graphing meter. 
you can see we've got can low so that starts at 5 volts and drops onto the other one and that's can high it has got a signal starts low the peaks are high so I know it's upside down for you but that's what it is so again if either of them can lines were shorted we'd know there was an issue if either one of them was dead we'd know there's an issue we could go further scope it etc but i don't think we need to so we know we're hoping that this side of it is okay so we'll just plug it in and double check the voltage in the earth just in case when it's loaded it drops away so we've got a 12.2 and we've got an earth yep we are meant to load test them but i think we're going to just strip it strip this out quickly have a look what we've got in the head unit and then it's worth spending a bit of extra time on there so well, let's do that and i'll show you what we find back to the diagram we're going to test straight to the radio just got that stripped out pin 15 red and green 2.5 mil so it's going to be quite a thick one and a brown 2.5 mil as well on pin 12 so main live main earth in so let's go and check that see what we got this is the main plug at the back of the stereo we've got it's quite hard to see actually from where you are big thick brown you know where that one is two and a half mil we've got our earth and now onto the ignition on right red and green 2.3 volts we've got volt drops somewhere so right well We've got something, let's just double check. Yeah, ignition's on. Yeah, 2.3 and rising. So, right, we need to look down that area of the diagram. All right, let's go and have a look where it comes from. This is where we try and flick between some of the diagrams, what we've got. Again, all data, bit of a pain to find fuse locations. We've all used auto data, haven't we? We've all done this. So, here's a fuse layout for auto data, shows it all exactly how we've written. We've all used it, we all know the, the sort of layout, so it's quite a nice, easy one to go back to. So, it is saying fuse 14 on the audio system, so that's where we're going to go and check. Um, so yeah, fuse 14 on here could be a pain to find. In fact, let's try the hyperlink, see if it works. If it does, I'll be amazed. There we go, wiring diagrams, fuse 14. So it shows you where it is, what powers it, but doesn't show you the fuse location. Again, you'd have to go and search for that. So. We are going to go with all data, auto data even. So let's go to fuse 14, check back there, then we'll work out whether the faults before, before the fuse are blown fuse or between the two. So we'll check what voltage we've got here. We know we've got a couple of volts up at the head unit itself. Let's go check there, see what we've got. Well, not the nicest place for a fuse box, but this is fuse 14, which is that one there. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got 2.3 volt coming into that fuse on both sides. It's not blown. So that matches what we've got at the stereo unit. So we've lost live. Um, let's go back to the diagram. I'll show you a couple of things. So back to the diagram. This is the one which when we checked for the fuse, whether it linked it across, this is the one it come up with. This is a diagram it come up with. Um, so what you're saying is, Fuse 14, 15 amp, gets supplied by either this control relay or a DC to DC converter. We don't know what system this has got uh, without automatic engine start, with automatic engine. Ah, okay. So with stop start and without stop start. And if we go to auto data again, We get a power distribution. Fuse 14, again, it shows it either powered from 
this line here, which is DC to DC converter, or it could be coming out of, it could be powered from the other one, which is the control relay. But it actually links, oh, leave it blue, 14, 15, 13, um, 25, it's quite a few. In fact, if it was this relay failing and stopping power going through, we'd lose it on fuse 25, 26, 27. If it's just the DC to DC converter, we'd lose it on 13, 14, and 15, but these ones will still be live. So I'm going to go back and check what they're doing, and then we will be able to work out what system we got. Don't need to look whether it's got stop start or not. It will sort of tell us where the input for that fuse will come from. So we've also had this Voxel Vivaro come in. He's phoned up, said he's got a battery drain and the two side rear doors are not locking. That's what we thought. <clears throat> so he said the battery has been going flat for quite a while now. Last time we left it for about 10 days, it went flat. But then after that, the next time it went flat, the rear doors wouldn't open. They're actually electric sliding doors. They wouldn't open automatically. They would work, they would unlock, and you could work them backwards and forwards manually, but they wouldn't work actually on the buttons and power doors. So since then though, he said his battery hasn't gone flat. So I was like, okay. He said, also, I've got a motorcycle in the back. Could you give us a hand getting it out? Because I'm going to go around, ride around for the day, stay overnight, then I'm going home. I was like, what do you mean? He's actually a viewer of the channel. He's traveled 150 miles from Oxford just to come to us because he's lost faith in the people around by him. And he wouldn't have to check it because he's seen what we do on the internet. So how good's that? But it does make it a bit hard, you know. If when he's driving home, he gets a warning light coming on. You know, if any other customers around here, we've literally just done one. We, we fitted a wiper arm last week and a fuse is blown for the wiper motor now. You know, we wanted to check, make sure it's all okay. It looks like the actual motor's maybe starting to fail, but it's only the arm what's seized up. But we said, no problem, bring it in. If this one's half, you know, five miles away from home when it comes in, it's going to be a nightmare. You know, we ain't going to be able to say, yeah, just pop back in. But it is what it is. Anyhow, I was hoping to get a nice video out of this. Obviously, a viewer would like, he'd like his car on one of my videos. But we've got it in. We've checked through the battery drain. Battery drain is not there at all but the rear doors weren't working. So we started stripping it out, gone to the main motor on this side, we're stripping all the control, all, all the inner panels out, check lives, earths, cans, everything like that. We had it apart for about 10 or 15 minutes with the ignition on, checking it through. As we plugged it back in, it started working. So we've done exactly the same to the other side, ignition on, disconnected it all, connected it all back up. They've started working as well. So they must have just got confused where the battery had gone flat. This is a Peugeot-based Vauxhall. So all Peugeots, unless their sequence is right, they, they do get the ump. So we've done that, we've checked it all out. We've double checked the battery drain, even with the rear doors working and locking up and everything, and it's still okay. So we're gonna message him. He left at five o'clock this morning to come down to us. So he's not gonna to wanna to take it back tonight and drive all the way out there. I want to double check the battery in the morning. So I'm gonna message him, tell him to stay overnight, coming in the morning. As long as it's done, you can take it back with him. So, how's that for service? So, what? Right, let's get back onto this BMW. Yes. Yeah. It only, we've only lost the voltage. We've got 2.2 volts on 13, 14, and 15. We have still got voltage on the other lines, which, you know, 22, 26, or 25, 26, 27. Then one's got full voltage. So, we know it's not this relay breaking down. It looks like we're losing it for the DC DC converter. Again, that didn't show it on the all data. You don't have as much information. It's better information. And if you can flick, flick through every sort of every piece of information they got, it's good. But sometimes it doesn't quite flick across. So that's why it's worth having the same as having scan tools. You need two or three different scan tools, two or three different data systems. So that's what we're going to do. So now I've got to try and find DC to DC converter. And I'll show you when I found it. Great success! He's a genius! So, DC to DC converter. It's got corrosion in it. It is sat. There's no cover on it. It's just this. Is it meant to be a cover? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like there's any ECU cover on there. Just that. That can't be right. Maybe it is. 
So it looks like that's just the cover for it. So what I'm going to do, we have still got the voltage up on the red and white. So we've got voltage up to it. So I'm just going to link it across from the red and white to the red and green. That should bring the radio on. If it does, we just need a new plug, new DC to DC converter, job scout. So I'll show you it working. And there we go, look. Oh, working. So I'll just show you the bypass I've done. I've literally linked out them two wires. Dink these out. Just with a banana lead. And she's about working. So yeah. So what we've got to do is order one of them up, tell the customer the price of the part and the repair, get it all back together. And then, yeah, that'll be it done. And there we go, another one done, simple as that. So yeah, little things like that can be easily missed. Obviously it's losing its power. Why didn't you check the fuse, people say. These type of things where they've got multiple different head units, they do seven way ones and this and that and that. They put fuses in different places. You can be tracing around, trying to work out where you've got your fuse, you know, what's gone. But we had low voltage on quite a few different fuses. Until we go to a diagram and see how it works, it's not as easy to actually find what's going on. So. There we go. Customer's going to be over the moon. New module, bit of a clean up. Jobs carrot. See you on the next one.